So um, before you can understand behavioral economics, it's always helpful to know a little bit about how the brain works. Now, I have to admit, I always shy away from anything resembling neuroscience. And the completely self-interested reason for this is that I always forget the different names and end up looking silly. So for that reason alone, I would never go too deeply into neuroscience. However, without the necessity of actually describing every single part of the brain, including the, you know, uh, for example, the, you know, the, the role of the prefrontal cortex versus the hippocampus versus, um, uh, you know, uh, some, something called the medulla oblongata, I vaguely remember. Is that, is that in the brain? I think it is. Yeah, okay. Without getting into any of that, um, what is useful to know is that there are parts of the brain which effectively respond to feelings and there are parts of the brain which process language and the parts of the brain that deal with feelings don't understand language. Now I can give you two very good book recommendations here, one of which is simply called Strangers to Ourselves by a very excellent man called Timothy D. Wilson. The other excellent book is a book about what is sometimes called the argumentation or argumentative hypothesis. And that book uh, is written by two people, two Frenchmen actually, um, Hugo Mercier and Dan Sperber. And it's called The Enigma of Reason. And I'll stop there because our gin has arrived. So. Both those books which I've just mentioned have something very important to say, which is that we don't always fully have introspective access to the reason for our actions. And there's a wonderful phrase of Jonathan Heights in which he says, the conscious brain thinks it's the Oval Office, when in reality it's much more like the press office. The conscious brain has this delusion that it's in control of everything, and that it decides what you do for rational, conscious, knowing reasons. In fact, to a great extent, what it's in fact doing is creating plausible post-rationalizations after the event to explain decisions or actions we undertook for reasons it doesn't fully understand. And the reasons it doesn't fully understand this is very simple, which is that the parts of the brain which are often decisive in what we do and what we feel aren't properly connected to the bits of the brain that do the talking or the conscious thinking. And so in many cases, if you ask someone, uh, you know, why did you suddenly jump off the road onto the curb? They'll say, because I heard the bus coming. And the story will be consciousness of bus, aware of bus, gosh, I must avoid this bus, jump on curb. If you actually look at what really happens is your brain is conscious of some sort of movement of which it knows nothing. It just knows that there's something coming from the right that it's unsure of. Uh, you instinctively jump back on the curb before you're consciously aware of the existence of a bus in many cases. But what the brain does is it tells a story in which consciousness is the decisive actor, even if consciousness and reason and rationale is not the decisive actor in the action. What it really was is you jump back on the curb because of a feeling and it's probably an instinct which predates the existence of language in the human brain in parts of the brain which are very, very ancient. What's important for a marketer, I think, in this is that, one, you can't take market research completely literally because, as another great, by the way, a very, very good writer on this, um, uh, is a man called Robert Kurtzman at the University of Pennsylvania. Read all his books and his blog, which is now sadly um, uh, kind of defunct, but, but the old postings are worth reading, and read his books. First of all, we don't generally know why we did the things we did. We did them for a whole host of emotional reasons because they made us feel good for evolutionary reasons. And what we've laid on it is a plausible sounding narrative and explanation of why we did it in order to make ourselves look okay, which may or may not be the real explanation. Um, the second thing to realize, as I said, is market research is a bit dubious. The second thing you've got to be very careful of is assuming in the matter of persuasion, in behavior change, all you have to do is persuade the conscious brain and, and the behavior will follow. The conscious brain thinks that's true. The conscious brain thinks, if you can persuade me of a case for saving polar bears, I will recycle all my rubbish and buy an electric car. 
In reality, at the very least, you have to get the unconscious part of the brain in alignment with the conscious part in order for anything decisive to happen on the part of human action. And merely persuading people of the goodness of a course of action or the reasonableness of a course of action may not be decisive enough to change how they actually behave unless there's some complementary emotional feeling that will also drive the behaviour. Again, as I said, you know, the conscious brain thinks it can just overrule irrationality. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, simply because of the order of events, uh, that doesn't happen. In fact, in many cases, it happens the other way around.